Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, and inside our body, we have 20 different types of amino acids. Now, what exactly distinguishes one amino acid from another one? Well, it's the side chain group that not only differentiates the amino acid from other amino acids, but it's also that side chain group that gives the amino acid its properties and its chemical reactivity. So, in this lecture, we're going to focus on 15 of these amino acids, and in the next lecture, we're going to focus on the remaining five. So, we're going to categorize these amino acids based on their hydrophobic and hydrophilic properties, based on their side chain groups. So, let's begin by focusing on those amino acids that contain nonpolar, non reactive hydrophobic side chains. So we have eight of these. We have alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, we have methionine, we have phenylalanine, tryptophan, and we have tyrosine. So let's begin by focusing on these four right over here. So notice that what these four have in common is each one of these side chain groups, which are shown in the colored region, are basically hydrocarbon molecules. And hydrocarbon molecules contain carbon and H atoms, and they're nonpolar, and that makes them hydrophobic and non reactive. Now, as we go from left to right, the hydrocarbon group increases in size. So we essentially add two carbon atoms here, we add one more carbon atom compared to this one here, and in this particular case, we take this methyl group and we place it onto this carbon. So these two amino acids are more hydrophobic than valine, and valine is in turn more hydrophobic than alanine because the more carbon H atoms we have, the more hydrophobicity found within that particular amino acid. So that's exactly why valine is more electronegative than alanine and so forth. Now, what distinguishes leucine from isoleucine? Well, it's the fact that this carbon here contains this methyl group and that makes this carbon a chiral carbon. So this is chiral and that means it contains a mirror image. Now, inside the proteins of our body, this is the only enantiomer of isoleucine that we actually find. When this H atom is coming out of the board as shown in the following diagram. Now, let's move on to methionine. So, what exactly is the difference between these here and methionine? Well, well, unlike these, the methionine side chain contains a sulfur atom. Now, what's the electronegativity of sulfur as compared to the carbon? So, the electronegativity of carbon is 2.55, and the electronegativity of sulfur is 2.58, and those values are... <clears throat> And those values are essentially the same. And that's exactly why these bonds are nonpolar. And so this side chain of methionine is also nonpolar, it's non reactive, and it's hydrophobic. Now, what about these remaining three? What exactly do phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan have in common? Well, let's take a look at their side chain groups. Notice that their side chain groups all contain ring structures. In this case, we have a benzene. In this case, we have a benzene that contains a hydroxyl group. And in this case, we have a group known as an indole group that essentially consists of these two fused rings. Now, all of these are hydrophobic, all of them are nonpolar, but some of them are less hydrophobic than others. So, which ones? Well, this one here contains a benzene ring and nothing else. And a benzene ring contains carbon and H atoms, and so it makes this very hydrophobic and very non reactive. Now, if we look at tyrosine and tryptophan, tyrosine contains the relatively electronegative oxygen and the relatively electronegative nitrogen. And that's exactly why these are slightly less hydrophobic and slightly more reactive than the phenylalanine because of the presence of these relatively electronegative atoms. But because we have these relatively large ring structures, these are still hydrophobic, they're still relatively non-reactive as compared to these other amino acids as we'll see in just a moment.
So these are our eight hydrophobic side chains. And what that means is because we have these nonpolar side chain groups, these nonpolar side chain groups tend to pack together and aggregate. And so in the protein, these are the side chains that will point into that protein structure because they will not want to interact with the polar water molecules that are usually found in solution that are usually found in or outside that protein. So remember, inside the cells of our body and inside our body in general, our solutions are made predominantly of polar water molecules. And these proteins are usually found inside the polar molecules. And so as a result, all these amino acids that contain these hydrophobic side chain groups are going to display the hydrophobic effect and they're going to basically create this packed structure that will be found inside that protein as compared to outside. Now, let's move on to the uncharged hydrophilic polar side chains. So these are the amino acids that essentially contain electric dipole moments. They contain a certain polar nature. And because of their polar nature, they will be found on the outside of that protein structure interacting with the polar water solvent molecules. So we have serine, we have threonine, we have asparagine, glutamine, and we also have cysteine. Now, notice that serine basically contains this hydroxyl group that is attached to our carbon. Now, remember, our oxygen is much more electronegative than our H atom, so this will gain a partial negative charge. This H atom will have a partial positive charge, and so we have a dipole moment that essentially points from this positive end to this negative end. And so this will be a relatively polar side chain, but it is still uncharged. And that's why we label this as uncharged polar side chain. So this polar side chain will basically be able to interact with the water molecules found in our solvent. And that will basically de uh, determine or help determine the structure of our protein. Now we also have threonine. And the major difference between threonine and serine is that this carbon contains, instead of one of the H groups, it contains a methyl group. And so just like isoleucine, this threonine contains a second chiral carbon. And just like isoleucine, this is the only enantiomer of threonine that is found in our proteins found inside our body. Now, Notice that serine is almost like alanine, except one of the H atoms bound to this carbon is replaced with the hydroxyl group. And threonine is almost like valine, except one of these methyl groups is replaced with a, threon, uh, with a hydroxyl group. But because we have this electronegative atom, this is partially negative, this becomes partially positive, and so we have this dipole moment, and that makes this a relative relatively polar side chain and so a relatively polar amino acid. Now let's now look at asparagine and glutamine. So these are basically the same or these are very very similar. The only difference is in this particular case we have one additional CH2 group compared to this case. So on the terminal end of the side chain we have this carboxyamide group. So we have the carbon attached to our oxygen and the carbon is also attached to our nitrogen. And so what we see is this is partially negative, this is partially negative, this is partially positive, so the carbon is partially positive because it's less electronegative than the oxygen, and the nitrogen is more electronegative than H and more electronegative than the carbon. And so the nitrogen will also have a partial negative charge. And so we have this polarity that exists on the side chains, and so these are also polar. And they will be much more reactive than any of these hydrophobic side chains. So generally, our polar side chains are more reactive than the hydrophobic side chains.
Finally, we have cysteine. Now, cysteine is not only polar, but it's also very special because it is responsible for, uh, for forming these very important bonds known as disulfide bonds or disulfide bridges. And these are covalent bonds that exist within protein structures and they play an important role in actually determining the three-dimensional structure of our protein. So cysteine is structurally similar to serine, except it has a thiol group. So serine is polar and reactive in forming disulfide bridges. So if we compare these two, this is almost the same as this. The only difference is we replace the oxygen in this case with a sulfur in this case. But cysteine is actually sometimes uh, known as a special side chain or a special amino acid because of its importance in forming forming those disulfide bridges. So as we said earlier, asparagine and glutamine contain polar carboxyamide groups. Now let's focus on two special cases that contain special side chain groups. So we have the simplest type of amino acid that is actually a chiral. And, and that's because the side chain group is nothing more than an H atom. And so this is an A chiral carbon. It will not have an enantiomer because of these two identical H atoms found attached to our carbon. Now, because of this very small H atom, because it doesn't have that CH3 group, like let's say this one has, this one is not really labeled as a hydrophobic side chain, but because of its small size, it can easily interact with other hydrophobic side chains, and it can also interact with hydrophilic side groups. So glycine is the smallest amino acid. It is achiral, and because it's minimally in invasive because of that tiny H atom, it can fit into either hydrophobic or hydrophilic environments. And finally, let's take a look at another special case known as proline. Now, proline is technically a hydrophobic side chain, but because of its special structure of that side chain, we label it as a special side chain. So what's so special about the proline? Well, if we examine our side chain, this is the only side chain that connects not only to the alpha carbon, but also to that nitrogen, and we form this five-membered ring. Now, because of this five-member ring, this molecule is structurally restrictive, and that means this actually helps play a very, very important role in determining the structures of special types of proteins, as we'll see in future lectures. So although proline is hydrophobic, and technically it should belong to the hydrophobic side chain group, it is special in that it contains a side group that is bound to the alpha carbon and the nitrogen. So this is bound to this carbon here, as well as this nitrogen here. Now the five member ring of proline makes it structurally restrictive, allowing it to greatly influence the structure of special types of protein. So these are 15 of the 20 different types of proteins found inside of our, uh, of our body. The other five proteins we're going to focus in the next lecture. And these other five proteins are also polar, but they actually contain full charges on their side chains, as we'll see in the next lecture.